from the SAP Center at San Jose, home of the San Jose Sharks. Extracting the signal from the noise, it's the Cube, covering HGST Sports Data Silicon Valley. Brought to you by HGST. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff. Frick. Okay, welcome back, everyone. We are here live for the wrap up of Sports Data. SV, Sports Data Silicon Valley, hashtag Sports Data SV. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle, and co-host Jeff Frick, and now Stu Miniman, guest analyst at Silicon Angle Media Research, wikibon.com, infrastructure cloud, big data analyst. Guys, I learned a lot today, but the one thing I learned is Sports Data SV is a meme now on Twitter. There's Cube Gems up, if you go to hashtag Cube Gems, search on Twitter, hashtag Cube Gems and you will see all the fantastic highlights that are already on the network. So we're pumping content out like it's nobody's business right now, Jeff. I love it. So Got to compete in real time. Just want like to thank sports. the audience here and HGST for sponsoring special presentation. Um, I learned a ton. The first thing I learned is, my favorite exclusive scoop is, the NFL is tracking balls with RFIDs because of deflate gates too. He told us, I brought it up as kind of a joking thing. No, he said, no. We are tracking RFIDs on the footballs. So there it is, innovation off the of Tom Brady deflate gate. So Jeff, what did you learn? Well, I, I, that was from Mike, and I, I think it's so interesting what Zebra's doing, and, and I love what Mike talks about, kind of a, a very different philosophy around data. NFL's got more of a closed data, we're tracking it all, we'll let it out a little at a time for the fans, for the teams, et cetera. MLB, whether it was intentionally or not, basically said, we've got an open API to our data, we'll open it out to crowdsourcing, you guys build the apps, you do the analytics, you do the crowdsourcing, very different strategy. Um, yeah. One is not right, one is not wrong, but I think that's pretty interesting. I, I also just love how the data, which was really a simple entertainment vehicle, the yellow stripe for the first down line, the markers on the NASCARs, is it Jeff Gordon or not? Um, has now evolved into people saying, wow, there's a lot of value so, in this data. We can use it in a number so the of different the ways. So the instrumentation was for broadcasting purposes. Right. That became an asset later on. That became on. an asset later on to be used in a number of different ways. So I just love how the evolution uh, kind of changed over time. And even with this pitch tracker, like I said, they were doing that for years before they suddenly woke yeah. up and said, hmm, maybe we should do something with this. It, it goes back to you know a term we hear over and over and over at all the shows we get, which is this this data exhaust. You know, it's the data exhaust, and no, you can't keep all the data exhaust. Yeah. It's too expensive. We don't know what to do with it. Wow, how the world has changed with well, cheaper storage, better analytics. Don't don't throw any of the exhaust away. The There's other stuff the other there. reflection on this also is the approaches of the data. You mentioned. They didn't know what to do with it, and they got a competitive edge. Major League Baseball put pitch count out since 2005, Mike was talking about, and the innovate money ball came out of that. Okay, so that was strategic. Take the NFL, siloed, hold the data. I don't like what the NFL's doing. I personally think it's a bad strategy. They hoard the data and release it out. MLB has a no policy rule for fiber optics, only no communications to the fans. At some point, Jeff, the transparency and the, the data is going to bust out. And the hoarding and the restrictions, restrictions are going to go away. Yeah, and, and, and clearly uh, MLB you know, Enterprises was broken out of MLB. They were so innovative, they're so ahead of the curve. When we talked to Bill years ago, you know, the Giants had built their own app, but then MLB took it over, they have a better app. And now they've they basically signed a deal with the NHL, so now the NHL can use the best cutting edge social platform available, developed by the MLB, to deliver better experience to their fans. This is a great point. So this, if you're an organization, whether you're sports or a corporation, you got to make a decision, do you buy or build? If you look at who invested in platforms, MLB Advanced Media Unit started in 2000 as a spin out of all the teams, and they invested in streaming. They invested in the app for e-commerce. And then mobile hit the scene, they were perfectly positioned to leverage the mobile revolution. I think that changed the game and everyone else playing catch up. So if you're a company right now, if you don't have a platform, you got to buy one. So that's, that's what the sports teams are doing. If you're a franchise and you're out, and you're not a tier one city, you might have to buy someone else's app. Yep. Then you next, Levi Stadium started a, a company that does that. Yep. Why? Because there's efficiencies involved. So that's an interesting dynamic. What do you think about that? Yeah, I, I, 
clearly they got ahead of the curve, but I think what's inter what I think is most interesting about the intersection of tech and sports is the fact that these guys are competing live in real time in front of 70,000 live fans and millions if not billions of people on a Super Bowl Sunday watching them. The pressure to perform now, the, <laughs> the pressure to perform you know, immediately, the, pr the pressure to get a competitive advantage is tremendous. So the fact that they're now using all these big data tools, all these analytic tools, forget about the fan experience for a minute, just to get that little competitive edge. Even Stanford has, there's videos where even at Stanford, they're using the virtual reality uh, practice for the quarterback to get reps. What did you see? What did you not see? What are you keying off of? I mean, I think the innovation is just tremendous in this never ending arms race yeah. to get the little competitive edge. It's fascinating. And, and also the also the future of esports, you're going to start to see again the virtual reality thing you mentioned. But how does that apply to business? Stu, you, you're out there right now. Is business ready for this kind of innovation with cloud, mobile, and big data? Well, we're, we're definitely at a renaissance with data really at the center of things. I mean, last week uh, we covered on theCUBE uh, that IBM bought the data from the Weather Channel. I mean, you think about just a huge amount of data and what IBM's going to be able to do with that. Uh, we've got so much data in sports, and heck, weather's going to tie into it uh, for, for some of the for sports sure. here. I mean, not so they'll license but, that to all the bookies know, doing gonna, the fan duels but there, and all there, there, the. There's <laughs> the the intersection of all of these. I mean, it, it's been a real fun event here. I mean, it's, it's great here a crowd getting all excited about it. Uh, we've got the tech athletes, you know, interspersing with the, the, the sports athletes. So. Uh, you know, lots of opportunity with data and uh, you know, storage uh, becomes critically important as it becomes more ubiquitous well, and, and cheaper. Jonathan Martinez from the Oakland Raiders, I thought said it well, and I asked about Al Davis. I wanted to kind of find out what the new culture is for the Raiders. He, I liked what he said. It's a commitment to excellence and a will to win. And that is uh, an athletic thing, Jeff. And corporate America now has that same vibe. At Oracle Open World, we saw them opening keynote. We had, there it was, the Warriors, Golden State Warriors. Why? Because they're winners. Correct. And why are they winning? Well, you got, what did you, what did you get? You got Lakeup came in, in, VC, it's funded a lot of tech startups. Management team, <laughs> Management technology, 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 fan experience. You know, and they were at a good level uh, with their existing coach. They wanted to go another level up. They swapped out the coach. People thought they were crazy. Joe Lakeup was booed, booed when he made the trade um, years ago. Booed off his own floor. And they weren't booing them at the parade last year, John. They weren't. Well, that, <laughs> they were, had a winning team because they took fan experience beyond the actual sport itself. They made the celebrities of the, of the stars, they had an economic tie-in with big data, everything was integrated. Sounds like an integrated stacks too, that sounds like cloud. But at the end of the day, they got to win. And that, that's the one thing, that the, the purity of sports is, is at the end of the day, for all the stats, for all the fan experience, there's a score on the board and you get a W or an L. And that's really all that matters. All yeah. this stuff is fun, but these guys are really hyper competitive and you know, we all do our jobs, we're in meetings all day, we're out trying to do our thing. We don't have 70,000 people looking over our shoulder. At Not yet, the cube make. hopes to get 70,000 people looking over our shoulder. <laughs> well, that's true. Right now Except we have, here no one's, in, this, no one's in there. We have a fans <laughs> over here. How about a big, big uh, thank you to HGST for an amazing event. Great event. Oh, here they come. Here they come. Right. Bring it on. <laughs> All right. Here we go. <laughs> Great team. We are Chris here. Team. Wave to the crowd. We have a whole group here. All right. Sports Data SV, we're intersection with sports and data for competitive advantage. Managing your fans, managing your company, managing your athletes. That's what corporate America is doing. This is theCUBE. Thanks for watching. It's a wrap here in the Shark Tank, the Cube Tank, here in Silicon Valley. We'll be right back. Bye-bye. Thank you.